We begin with a new round of attacks on Israeli civilians. We've learned a suspect stabbed a 70-year-old Israeli woman outside a bus stop today. The attacker then tried to board the bus but was shot by police. And earlier in the day, Israeli police were able to prevent another stabbing in Jerusalem. Officers say they killed a man who reportedly tried to attack security forces. And in the West Bank, anger from both sides bubbling over as Palestinian protesters took to the streets, rioting in front of Israeli soldiers. There have been casualties on both sides in this recent wave of violence. At least 30 Palestinians have died and at least eight Israelis have been killed. CBS Radio News correspondent Dan Raviv, who has written books about Israeli spies and security, joins us now from Washington. Dan, thanks for being here. Sure thing, Vlad. The recent ongoing violence between uh, Israel and Palestine appears to really show no signs of slowing down as the death toll climbs every single day. Why now? Why this spike? I think, I, I, yeah, I think, Vlad, it's mainly a cry for attention by Palestinians. Uh, they feel that the world media and the world's governments are paying a lot of attention recently to ISIS and what's happening in Syria and Iraq to a degree. And the Palestinians feel they're being ignored, of course, since the creation of the State of Israel in 1948. And then the war in 1967, in which Israel captured the West Bank, Gaza, the Golan Heights, and Sinai, uh, peace treaties with Jordan and Egypt, but no agreement with with the Palestinians, a lot of frustration on both sides, and uh, well, this month especially, individual Palestinians, lone wolves, uh, are rising up. They're being glorified by Palestinian leaders as big heroes. Uh, I'm not sure it leads to anything good, but this may go on for quite a few more weeks. Dan, the, the peace agreement with Jordan and ultimately the Camp David Accords uh, that brought peace to Israel and Egypt was a huge, significant moment for both countries. Given what we've seen in just not even recently, but in the last couple of years, uh, in your estimation, in your analysis, will we ever see a two-state solution in that region? Uh, it could be. You know, in many ways, they're close. The maps are already drawn. Uh, the negotiators have been together, just not this year and not last year. The U.S. gave up on a mediation effort in 2013 when it wasn't succeeding, uh, but it was so close that it was well known that Israel would give up most of the West Bank except for some Jewish settlements. The Palestinians would get some land from Israeli territory as what was called a land swap. But the truth is that the leaders on both sides just weren't willing to complete the deal. Vlad, I would say they didn't have the courage to make what appear to be concessions. The Palestinians agreeing to a Jewish state of Israel that can live in peace and Israelis giving up their claims in the West Bank that date back to the Bible. Well, what you get, of course, is today's headlines shooting, as you see. Those are Israeli troops firing tear gas and sometimes live fire at Palestinian protesters. Dan, to that point, the military uh, deployed more troops and started more checkpoints today. Uh, and this is a question that I asked Mickey Rosenfeld, who is a police spokesman uh, there. Uh, but he gave me his, his point of view, which I understand clearly as a police officer and a superintendent, he wants to keep Israeli citizens, all citizens safe. But is this making things more violent? Hard to say. There's good and bad. Uh, first, you could say, what do you expect the Israeli government to do? Nothing. Palestinian uh, officials in Ramallah in the West Bank are saying it all comes down to Jerusalem. Uh, Israel's been trampling on Arab rights in that holy city, and Israel should give up East Jerusalem, and that would settle everything. Well, of course, that's not going to happen. So in the short term, just like in American cities, when there's a lot of unrest, the National Guard and the police go in. Well, in Israel, you have troops and police and border guards. That's so that the Netanyahu government can tell Israeli citizens, we're doing something to keep you safe from all these dangerous people who want to stab you in random attacks. And, and Dan, final question, I guess. Uh, we've already seen some response, uh, at least on Twitter, from Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, we haven't heard much yet from the Palestinian Authority. Uh, should people expect that they, someone from that leadership, uh, releases a statement asking for calm, urging for calm, or is that not something that we're going to see? That's something that the United States would like to see. Secretary of State John Kerry was on the phone with the Palestinian President Abbas uh, during the past few days, also with Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu. And Kerry did ask the Palestinians to condemn violence. I imagine the answer from the Palestinian leadership was, it's not us. It's individuals who are angry and frustrated. Uh, there's also pressure from the Hamas radicals who rule Gaza. They prefer violence. They think it will lead to the Israelis giving up. The West Bank leadership is generally more moderate, but when people in the various cities, including East Jerusalem, are angry at the Israelis in doing this, no, I don't expect the Palestinians, not soon, 
to officially tell them to stop. Dan, that just brings up a good point before I let you go. Uh, I wonder if the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas, uh, wouldn't perhaps want to distinguish themselves from what is happening in Gaza with Hamas. In other words, to take a position that at least appears to call for calm and for peace, uh, and understanding that they have grievances as well, but perhaps that's a way to sort of separate them from the perception that, at least for example here in the United States, that people have that perhaps those two may be allied closer than they really are. Well said, Vlad. Have you been a U.S. diplomat? That, frankly, is what the Americans and the Europeans have been telling the Palestinian leadership. Be moderate. You will get something. You already have a lot more economic prosperity than the Gaza Strip has. You're not blockaded like the Gaza Strip. Talk peace with the Israelis. Now, again, the Palestinians complain that the Israelis will never give up all of their settlements and keep oppressing them in the West Bank. So because of internal Palestinian politics, I think that Mahmoud Abbas and his government in the West Bank don't want to sound moderate right now. In order to please the Americans and Europeans, they might, just not for a few weeks. I'm afraid we're in for some violence first. Yeah, Dan, I always appreciate talking with you. Certainly, though, it's always around these moments of violence. But great analysis. I appreciate it. Thank you, Vlad.